I'm Stargate Pioneer. I'm Haley. And I'm Lauren from Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. A podcast member of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the one you're listening to now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out all the other podcasts at GunnaGeekNetwork.com and get ready because geekiness begins in three, two, one. Hello and welcome to episode 78 of Better Podcasting. On today's show, we're going to get real about the expectations for starting a podcast. The cruel, cruel expectations. In this week's Better Podcasting download, we're going to tear down some bridges. And finally, in our Better Pod back, we've got a bunch of feedback from listeners about podcasting success and a variety of other topics. Episode 78 of Better Podcasting begins right now. Welcome to Better Podcasting, a show where we talk about podcast tips, tools, and best practices to help you succeed with your podcast. What makes us different? Well, just like you, we podcast purely out of the love and fun of it. Podcasting is our hobby, and we recognize that it's yours too. We always encourage your questions and feedback, and you can find all of our contact information at betterpodcasting.com. Here's your host for the show, Stephen John Drew and Stargate Pioneer. Welcome back to another episode of Better Podcasting. I am Stephen John Drew, and of course, there is my co-host, Stargate Pioneer. Stargate Pioneer, Star Pi, SP, whatever you want to call me, although most people call me SP. It is another great week to have a better podcasting podcast, so we decided to come on into our studios and record it, lay some tracks down, and get some great information to you. We got a great show coming up for today, don't we, Steven? Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not set the bar too high, Stargate Pioneer. Let's not get too carried away, okay? Uh, all right, fine. We have a mediocre show uh, <laughs> for you today because we're just a couple of hobby podcaster hacks and we don't know what we're talking about. But no, oh. seriously, we got some good information for you about realistic expectations learned from the hard rocks of hobby podcasting. Yes, indeed. And uh, before we get there, though, we want to tell you that we want you to tell us all about your podcast because we're all about the communal learning here. And we want to know how have you saved your podcast? Send us in an email. You can send us a phone call via wave. We don't actually have a phone number, but you can send it. You can send us an audio file. You could send us a video, or if you want, you can definitely stalk Stargate Pioneer and tell him directly. You can, and just to be clear, I may or may not have a taser, and I may or may not use it on you, so <laughs> just, just keep that in mind, folks. Yeah, but we are very interested in how I save my podcast stories, because that is when the real learning takes place, where you think you know everything that you need to do, you get it going, you get your great interview, or you have this fantastic episode, and then you find out, huh, something went wrong with the audio, or rats there was this like bird in the background and i heard it the entire whatever it is we want to know how you save your podcast now steven i actually have a how i saved my podcast story what did you break something again stargate pioneer i did this time i can 100 percent say it was not a technical failure it was an sp failure and here's what happened folks so we have an actually released any of this information yet but i did indiana comic-con as we talked about in last podcast of better podcasting and i recorded a lot of audio a lot of video well i get home and i start unloading some of the last stuff that was done on sunday and i copied and pasted something into the wrong file on my computer so then i just deleted it but oh crap i was in the wrong window i was in the sd card window and no, I had not copied it to the wrong place. I had actually copied it over itself on the SD card. So I had deleted the copy and the original all at the same time. Ah. Well, Stephen, he gave me some good words of advice. He said, you know, SP, I've heard that's easy to do. And I said, OK, Stephen, if it's easy to do, tell me how to do it. He just goes, eh, go into Windows 10 recovery. It'll be there. 
No, it is not. Not for SD cards. It does not have a recovery option. So what I did is I did, as Steven talked about last podcast, I did a little Googling. I went into Google and I found this great CNET article, I believe from back in like 2014, and it's how to recover deleted photos from a memory card, which was great. It gave some options on how to do it, gave some software options. I chose one that was safe. I downloaded it and I recovered the deleted files from the SD card, which apparently is very easy because this sort of thing happens all the time. Just let me give you a bit of advice. Once this happens, stop, cease and desist all activity on your SD card because you don't want to overwrite the files that were deleted because the file structure isn't there anymore. And then you can use one of these recovery tools to bring it back. So that's what I did and yay, files were fine. They were playable. I booted them up into the uh, Audacity, I believe. They were audio files. I booted them up on Audacity and they were just fine. So that is how I saved my podcast to be because it hasn't been released yet. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad you were able to fix those. And um, I actually got to say the reason why I knew this, just as a little sidebar, the techie in me is going to come out here. I knew it was easy because I have been told if you are giving away like a camera or you're giving away anything, pull the SD out because usual apparent traditional erase tools and stuff don't, don't work on it. That's what I've been told many, many times and that it's super easy to get back. So I knew you're going to be able to get them back and I'm glad you were able to. So good job on that. And also in our chat right now at geeks.live, because when we do record, we do stream this to geeks.live. We have the one and only Anthony Bachman saying that he also has a how I save my podcast story. And it is I save my podcast through Chris Farrell for real Farrell app on my computer. It seems to only work on Sunday mornings. Now, what that is, is, is Anthony is a member of the Gonna Geek Network show, All Things Good and Nerdy. And um, Chris Farrell, who we've had on the show before, he is the one that is is the, the guy behind the show. He's sw editing things. He's, you know making documents. He's telling everybody how to be better. Trust me, they've all come to me individually and they've been like, Chris is kind of mean. So, you know, he, he, no, I'm just joking, but, uh, Chris is the one that's behind it. And, uh, so everybody respects and appreciates all the effort Chris puts into that show. One would call him a producer. I, I, I wasn't going to give him a name that I didn't know if it was true. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Anthony has producer credits, but let's go ahead and move on to our main topic. Here we go. So today we have a fun topic that is going to some people think, hmm, sounds familiar. Some people are going to think, oh, I want to know this because I'm about to start my own podcast. And what this is based off is that recently we've seen a bit of a spike in different communities, different podcast communities that we've talked about previously all over the place. People asking some questions or, you know, expressing frustrations because they're fairly new podcasters. And SP and I thought this was a good opportunity to come and just tell it like it is, because a lot of these questions that are coming up are things that people who have experienced starting a podcast before or participating in a podcast before, a lot of times are looking at these answers going, mm, maybe think twice about your expectations. So that's what we're doing today. We are going to outline some very cruel cruel expectations for people starting a podcast and we want we think that this is beneficial to multiple people not only the people starting a podcast because again i think it's very important here that you set your expectations realistically but also people who are maybe thinking a little bit about uh where i can place my focus maybe we're seeing sort of their numbers going a little bit stale so it just gives an idea to really just think about the basics and really think about the expectations you're setting for yourself and how you can work within that in order to grow your podcast further. SP, I know you are the king of this show, so what do you think? Do you think people have far too high expectations when they start a podcast? Everybody has wonderful expectations when they start a podcast. They think, wow, this is going to be great. I listen to some great podcasts. People are going to want to listen to me because I'm going to bring some great material to them, and uh, most of the time, it's not going to be that way. I mean... It might be because you have uh, different expectations for web hosting or statistics. And sometimes it's, well, I can do this for free. 
And we're going to give some expectations on that. We've talked about that before, but we're going to be part of that expectation. And just a lot of these expectations can be sugar coated from different uh, podcast advisors out there who might be biased in a way and their bias leads to them to sugarcoat. Now, we're not going to dissuade anybody from not wanting to start a podcast. We're just going to say, this is what is real. We're, we're going to get real with you and tell you what actually to expect along the way. Absolutely. So today we're going to talk about the cruel reality of starting a podcast. Uh, and again, you can tie that in if you are an existing podcaster. And then we've got some other interesting sort of cruel reality conversations for future weeks. But starting off with today's episode, here's what we want to start off with. And the, the thing number one that we want to caution people is that getting listeners sucks. Like, it really sucks to try to get listeners. Now, the podcast world is very crowded, right? And this is this is the way that it is. It's very crowded, and it's getting more and more crowded because we've talked about it. More ears are coming to podcasting. More people are deciding to try podcasting because it's easier than it's ever been to start a podcast. And if you are starting a podcast, you're entering this already full and saturated market. That's something that you are entering into, and you got to try to break through there. It's kind of like dating, except worst, worse, because dating apps, there's at least some matchmaking going on where you can go in, you can fill out your profile, and then it'll try to match it up with the profile. No, no, you don't have that with this. If you look at all of these different resources, iTunes, you look on uh, Google Play, you have very, very, very limited ways to narrow down that pool of potential podcast listeners and also as a listener, potential podcasts. The criteria just isn't there. It's not like I can go in and be like, I want to hear a high audio quality program. That's what my dedicated number one, high dedicated quality audio. Number two, I want it to match what I want to listen to. Three, I want it to be anybody but Stargate Pioneer. No, that's not going to happen. I, I can't fill out this listener podcast relationship profile and get a match. It's very hard, very, very hard to get listeners to come to your show because of these reasons. It's ran it's essentially random stumbling across podcasts. So when you were starting to talk about the dating app, I thought you were starting to talk about the automatic bots that are in some <laughs> of these dating profiles. You know, some of these uh, dating matchmaking programs or sites online that they'll put a lot of female bots in there to get the males to come in and, and try to get their money. Basically. I thought that's where you're going. No, there doesn't even exist that in podcasting. Yeah. There are bots that might peruse your website that might uh, hit your Twitter feed, but there's no dedicated program out there to even do that. So yeah, getting listeners and even getting bots sucks as a podcaster. <laughs> um, now we, we want to highlight this because often we get people, new people approaching us and we see them on communities of people saying, well, is this reasonable amount of numbers that I'm getting? And the thing is you, you need to set this expectation. Number one is that it's going to be hard to get listeners. So if you're getting even one interaction and you're fairly new, that means that you've at least connected with one person. And, and you know, let's appreciate a little bit what you have accomplished when you have that. Not thinking, well, I thought that I would have 3,000 people by now. I've been podcasting for two and a half weeks. Yeah, no, not going to happen. <laughs> I've been podcasting for 14 hours. I should have 100 listeners right now. <laughs> and let's uh, some expectations from the front here. Lipson has released statistics that says the median amount of of listeners that you get from a podcast is about 200. That means 50% of the podcasts out there get under 200 listens per episode and 50% get over 200 listeners. And the me mean or the average is around 2000, slightly more than 2000 right now. But so that is some average number. So if you're doing better than 50% of the people out there, 50% of the shows out there, you're getting more than 200 listeners. Or if you take in the average, which counts for like podcasts that get millions of downloads per episode, you're talking 2000. So those are some just hard numbers right off top of the bat, but we're going to move past that right now. And we're going to go into some myths, basically of podcast expectations. And the first one is if you make great content, they will come. That is just not true. Nope. It's been spoken for a while. We've all heard it. We've 
uh, kind of bought into it basically because we think it's true because, well, we have a good product and it's going to get noticed, right? It's kind of dated. And the reason it's dated is because the pod space is so big now. So it, we don't like to say that there's a discovery problem because there really isn't. But that's essentially what's happening is you're getting lost in the sea of content. And the reality is content is absolutely helpful to getting more listeners. You can't get good listeners without a good quality show and good content. Uh, but it's just not enough these days, is it, Stephen? No. Now, as SP mentioned, listenership is increasing. It's harder for people to find you. But the thing that comes with this increase is also the potential tr the type of listener. And what I mean by that is that what does great content mean? There are some people who are like, great content is clean content that is very easy for my ears to hear. I can listen in front of my family. It's wholesome. It's great. And then there's other people who are like, great content is Howard Stern, right? Like th th there's a variety of different people. And as podcasting gets more and more on people's radar, there's going to be different types of podcast listeners coming into the, the market and trying to think, look at things. And you're going to get those people who are like, no, I want the Howard Stern type show. You know, the big reality I had here was that I actually had somebody once tell me that they were no longer listening to my show because I decided to make it clean. I decided to stop swearing. And if by chance anybody slipped as we were transitioning, I was going to beep it out. And this was a big awakening to me because it's like, you know what? I've made this decision here that I, I want to go a clean way with this show. And there's people who actually don't like that. And that's that's the thing. What is great content? That person there that I'm referring to would tell me that my show is not great content because I didn't swear. Different types of listeners. Yeah, that's everybody has a different mindset. It's called diversity of thought. And even though you might be thinking a, a certain way and you think you've got your niche nailed because of demographics and statistics and whatever. No, it's completely a uh, thought difference. Some people think differently than you do. Amazing uh, thought revelation right there. Right. But to move on, another thing that you have to consider if you're just starting podcasting is your initial podcasts are not that great. They really aren't. They won't be. And it's great to start, by the way, and it's great to get them out there because you can't improve unless you get them out there. But if you're just thinking, I hear these guys, I can do that. No problem. I can just pick up a microphone, get a camera, throw my stuff on YouTube, throw my stuff into Libsyn, and I'll have this great podcast. And it's not true. It's just like if you look at major league sports players and you think I can do that. And I'll give you a great example. If you go to a major league baseball game and you see these pitchers. Now, I know better than that, by the way, myself. But some people are thinking I can do this. So they they actually pay to play in summer leagues so they can get noticed by scouts so they can be picked up in the major league baseball draft, or whatever. See how many people get in front of the plate for the first pitch of the game and just fail miserably. <laughs> like the pitch goes off into the, the visiting dugout or whatever. And you're like, wow, this was a lot harder than I thought it was because my palm was sweating and the ball just slipped out of my hand. And no, no, you could be the best high school pitcher out there and you still might not be able to make it in the majors. That's well, that's a fact, actually. But and it's just not as easy as you make it think as it looks. Right, Stephen? Yeah. And a lot of people think that because it is a very encouraging time. It's very encouraging right now to look and say, I can get myself a Knox microphone for what is it? 40 bucks. Like, I just great. It's easy. It's sound great. It'll sound awesome. You know, everybody recommends this sort of starting point and uh, that's what I'll do. I'll go, uh, I'll be off to the races, but no, you start to do it. And it's definitely harder than you think. And as SP said, your first episodes are not that great and be okay with that. Because if you're okay with that, then you're going to acknowledge the ways that you can change, which is important. If you can say, I'm willing to grow, I'm going to start off by putting my show out there and I'm going to see where can I refine this. Then you're going to look for those as opposed to being like, I am doing the best darn start of a podcast in the hall of podcasting history. I don't need to improve. And then you just end up going stale. So uh, absolutely great point there, SP. The other thing that sort of is playing into that same sort of thing is that podcasting is more than a hobby to a degree it's actually work 
And why is that? Because we've talked about before how much time it takes to do a podcast, go through the process of recording and editing and publishing. Well, there's a lot of other things that you want to consider as well that maybe you're underestimating. And it's How much time is it going to take to interact with listeners? How much time is it going to take to follow up with listeners, promote things? And this is something that a lot of times people kind of forget when they're sitting there and they're, you know, even existing podcasters, they're like, you know, I want to take on another show. They're like, okay, what it'll be. It'll be a half hour show. So it'll take me about three hours altogether with with editing and publishing. They forget about the extra work, the follow up that's going to come, which is talking with listeners, promoting it, all this other stuff. And it is a very, very, very undervalued area because, again, there's tons of interactions with podcasters or with becoming a podcaster because now you're talking to the public. That's right. And talking about the public, there is no such thing as a free podcast. Well, yes, (laughs) there is such a thing as getting a free podcast. But when you're making a podcast, not downloading a podcast, there are costs to be incurred. So you hear all the time about these free podcast hosts. You hear, well, you can just do it with your existing condenser microphone or your chat headset. Now, to do a podcast properly, you're going to incur in expenses. It could be a, a basic microphone. We've talked about the Knox microphone. It could be a basic uh, stat service to find out where your listeners are. It could be just buying that $10 a year domain. Uh, But once you start, you're going to find more and more and more things to actually spend money on. Maybe you need to move a tier up on your hosting. Like you start with Podbean, you start at the lower level and you're like, oh no, I need to go to a higher level. Lipson's the same way. Oh, I bought that $5 a month plan, but oh, it won't fit all my episodes that I want to do in a month because the storage is too much. Well, then you have to up your plan to the $7, $15, or $20 mark. Maybe you need to get another domain. Maybe the domain that you purchased isn't all that great for SEO purposes, so you need another one. Or maybe you need a new microphone. Like that chat headset just isn't working out for you. So you go out and buy a condenser microphone, and you discover you can't edit with that. So then you finally acquiesce and choose a dynamic cardio microphone like we always recommend. But it's a cost. It's a constant cost to keep a podcast going. You can't keep it cheap, but it's going to cost you some money. So even if you own a microphone and go disregard all the good advice and go with a free place to host your podcast and don't get a domain and you do all the voicemail, voice work, excuse me, yourself, and uh, you're going to be paying for that with time. And let me tell you, as a father, as a husband, that time means something. Your time is money. Now, maybe it's a hobby and your time spent is is your hobby time. I get that. But every second, every millisecond that you spend editing audio, uh, recording voiceovers to do any of that stuff is time away from car maintenance, from uh, that your lawn is actually growing a little bit and you know you're going to have to mow it or snow is falling and you're going to have to shovel the driveway later, or you've got palm tree leaves falling on your roof and you need to rake those off or something like that. Every second that you spend podcasting is time that you could spend doing something else. And it doesn't have to be work. It could be fun stuff as well. Could be uh, exercise. It could be going to see the latest Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. Could be something like that. But it is time away from there. So that's time is money, right, Stephen? Yeah. And, you know, like a great example that I love is the car repairs, right? Like a lot of people are like, if I got the right tools, I can do car repairs. But you forget about how much time you're spending on those car repairs. And they only only really make sense if you're willing to commit that time because they can take you hours. It's the same thing with podcasting. You start off and you're like, I'm going to do this. And next thing you know, you have forgotten about everything that SP mentioned. So absolutely, you're going to pay for it in one way or another. But the good news is once you've got yourself into the podcasting world, you get yourself a magic podcasting club card. You start making your podcast and you get this exclusive podcasting club card. Yep, you get this podcasting club card. No, no, that's there not is true. no podcasting club card. <laughs> it doesn't exist. And, you know, even it, there's a lot of great community out there with a lot of community resources and people have done podcasting hundreds, if not thousands or hundreds of thousands of times already. And you get 
a great community response if you ask about what's available to actually podcast with, right? And they all have something to say about what is going to be if they were redoing episode number one. So you have a lot of resources available, but sometimes the resources aren't exactly the correct way to go about it. It might be somebody that actually has a soundproof room and says a condenser microphone is the absolute best microphone to get. And so you waste your time, not only and your money, not only buying the condenser microphone, but then having to deal with trying to edit out that room reverb or those extra sounds that you find for those condenser microphones that they just magically seem to get. Yes, your voice is nice and clear, but so is everything else. <laughs> so that is time that you've taken away from yourself from creating content because you're dealing with the sound quality. Whereas if you had just purchased a dynamic cardio microphone before, you'd be fine. So just be aware of the advice that you get, especially for free. Yeah, there's no magic club that's going to get you all the 100% right answers. Not going to happen. Everybody's different. Now, speaking of that, you're going to start to get better at podcasting, but you'll never be perfect. What we mean is you're not going to get to a level of set it and forget it. Not going to happen because things are going to change. Maybe the iTunes directory is now called Apple Podcasts. Maybe all of a sudden there is now a new standard that's coming in. Or people are writing you saying, I really, really, really didn't like this sort of perspective that you've been doing week and week after week on your show. And you're like, you know what? I probably should pull that out. You're going to be getting all of these different pieces uh, or all of these changes that are going to happen and you're going to have to adapt. So you're always, always going to be evolving your podcast. So you're not going to get it all under your belt and be like, yeah, I'm done. Now it's just a in and out every week. Not going to happen. You're going to have to be adapting and changing. I'll give you a great example of that recently. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. We just changed the director on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. again. So the ladies, my co-host, reminded me a couple weeks ago, hey, SP, when are you going to change the intro? I'm like, what do you mean, when am I going to change the intro? I just changed it at the beginning of the year. I don't have to change. Oh, crap. I need to do that again. So that is time that I had to spend redoing the voice work for the intro to a podcast because something had changed along the way. Now, that's just something easy content-wise, but it could be vastly more difficult. Like, you have a piece of equipment, major equipment failure, or your computer or your mix or whatever. And then you go back to try to buy the same thing and it's not available anymore. So you have to buy this other thing and figure out how to use it. Software is a great example because stuff is always changing with software. Even Audacity, the free Audacity is constantly changing. So the next version that you download might be different in the way that you did your workflow and what you have now. Truncate Silence is a big example there that is different with every version of Audacity that I've used in the past three or four years. And you just have to get to know how to use the new version. And it is uh, ever-changing and you're going to have to adapt to change as it comes along, especially with podcasts, especially since we've even started the show, mm -hmm. RIP Lab. <laughs> so you're definitely going to adapt now the good news is once you get going you get everything going and you're set and you got some people coming in you are absolutely going to be famous right no that's not i'm happening. already famous yeah i am i'm famous i'm the i'm the genuine stargate pioneer <laughs> everybody knows that yeah, no, that's definitely not happening. A lot of people think as soon as they go in, they're going to be famous because even to a degree of fam famous, like, you know, they listen to the radio stations. They're like, hey, they're local famous or they see the weather person. They're like, hey, it's local famous. No, like, much tougher market because you are so again in that crowded, crowded market. It's going to be super hard for you to, quote unquote, be famous. So if you're trying to be famous, it's the wrong motivation. Don't make, try make that your motivation. I want to be famous. No, that's not going to happen. Uh, there's a hundred other ways you could try to be famous. My kids went to school with the local news anchors kids, by the way. So <laughs> I saw that news anchor. All day. He was just a regular person. He wasn't a celebrity. Didn't get need to be ushered in and out of his uh, kids classroom when they're doing student <laughs> teacher conferences and the same thing's going to happen to you you're just going to be a normal person you're not going to be treated like with free drinks or with um, uh, automatic upgrades to first class on flights and stuff like that no, i'm sorry it's not going to happen 
Oh, and by the way, that means you're not getting that sweet GMC Sierra 4x4 sponsorship. That's also not coming your way. Uh, I, I will continue to lobby for that until I get it. Now, the other thing is you might not even be notable. And what I mean by that is like there are people who are going to you're going to have these listeners interacting with you. And I will I will say to a degree, they might elevate you slightly. They might be like, oh, it's the Stargate Pioneer, the one I listen to every week. But to other people within the industry, they're going to be like star who star star gate star pie what and, and you That's might not, not even <laughs> a real name <laughs> you might not even even be notable within the industry but you know to a couple people you might be but the thing is just set the realistic expectations you're going to be out there you're going to be doing it for yourself and some of your listeners as well uh so don't don't try to do it for any level of fame it's just the wrong motivation altogether and i've seen people do this i've seen people talk all about it and be like oh nobody knows me what well i i tried to get into a convention saying i'm the steven and they're like who's the steven so there you go just don't do it by that and as i mentioned do it for yourself and nobody else because it's really really easy if you start doing it for other reasons and you're like i want to do it to have interactions with listeners or I want to do it so that people are asking me for advice or people are listening to my opinion. Super easy to fall off because all of a sudden, maybe the your listener base is a little quiet. Maybe you're not soliciting the feedback the right way. And now you're getting discouraged as opposed to being like, hey, I, this is my hobby. I want to do it for myself. Like when you're in that beer league and you're playing sports, you're not doing it for anything else. You're just doing it because you enjoy playing baseball or you enjoy playing football. You're not doing it for anybody else. And it's the same reason as a hobby podcaster. You should be doing your podcast for yourself primarily. And keep your original goals in mind, by the way, which could change over time, but keep them in mind. Because the reasons that you started to do the podcast for should prevail for a while, at least. And just keep those in mind. And they will keep you centered on why you're podcasting and not your download numbers. So, Stephen, the podcast advice you got from name whatever podcast advisor consultant out there. Here's a hard truth. It's biased. That's right. It's there. It's hard to come to grips with, but... There are a lot of big names that give podcasting advice, including the people that have successful podcasts. And while many of them might have the most honest, golden, best intentions, the reality is their advice isn't always black and white. So some extreme examples are that some of them may work or even own a certain po company that services podcasters somehow. They either give a service or a, a, a product for podcasters. So they're coming at it from that perspective. Now, the podcast might be divorced from whatever company that they're associated with, but they're still coming at it with that biased intent. That, that is their mindset. So you just have to take that into consideration. Yeah. So the more common example, though, Stephen, is... That they just have a reason that they have settled on a certain process and they want to just push that process. And what I mean by that is they've been doing something for many, many years one way. And as soon as somebody suggests something different, you know, their process, in all fairness, has worked fine. But it's really hard sometimes to see an alternative way to go. And it's just like, OK, well, I know I've done a thousand episodes my way. I've done 1,000 episodes my way, and I, I don't see why I should consider any other way. Well, maybe that way doesn't work for you. Maybe, again, you have different goals. So keep that in mind. It could just be a level of experience that is just biasing them to their own methods. They also might have an affiliate program, so keep that in mind. But don't get us wrong. You are not saying disregard their advice. Not at all. Uh, anybody who has been podcasting for a while has experience and that experience is worth listening to you. And especially if they've had successes and I guarantee you they've had failures. Well, listening to what they say is going to be invaluable to you, but just make sure you critically think and you look at it from your own unique situation and assess that and make sure that it applies to you as a hobby podcaster, because that's what we are in this show. We're hobby podcasters. 
All right. So here's an, another piece of advice that a lot of people don't want to admit. It's that your patience is going to be very tested. Now, people are going to annoy you when you get into podcasting. They're going to disagree with you. They're going to cause arguments and they'll even tag you in random things that you don't want a part of. Or you're like, why are you tagging me in a moose picture? Like, you just don't get it. It's, it's going to annoy you to some random degree and you're going to have <laughs> that to happen all the time up in Canada, by the way, people just take you in random moose pictures. It could be, I don't know, but uh, it's going to happen and it's going to test your patience because it, 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 now you are again, subjecting yourself to the public and it's a variety of different types of people. And so you want to be aware that you, you, this is going to happen and think about how you're going to deal with it. If you fly off the handle, it's a really good way to alienate people. That's not really a good idea on the flip side. Maybe it's a great way that you can actually take that and bring it into your podcast and make content out of it. You can be like, hey, look, last week I talked about this. I had this disagreeing point of view. Let's talk about it, right? Like it might be a real good way that you can create content rather than just getting annoyed and firing back. The other thing as well is that processes are going to annoy you. As we said, processes are going to change, i.e. blab went away, RIP blab. Communities themselves will even change. And maybe it's a place you've been getting a ton of feedback from. And now you're just seeing this pocket of people come in and they're giving one sided advice that doesn't work for you. And you're like, okay, now I got to evolve. I got to go to another community. People will definitely annoy you and things will annoy you as well. And finally, not just that you're being annoyed, but you personally will be disappointed. And this is just life in general. And it's easy to think, how can I be disappointed with this hobby? This is fun. I'm going to do this because it's great. But the reality is uh, you have chosen your hobby and of, of podcasting, but uh, it puts you in front of the public. It's just like if you choose politics, I'm sorry, but if you go into politics, you're going to be in the public face. And when you do that, you become vulnerable to the public or mass opinion. And it might be something small, like somebody disagreeing with you on something you said, or it might be something more extreme to get down to the core of your advice or whatever. But in any case, this can disappoint you when you hear these disagreements or it could be something as simple as download numbers or somebody not sharing a link they thought you would. And for the audio listener, I was totally attempted to be distracted by the wonderful co-host Steven here as he tried to video tag me with a picture of a moose right next to me. So thank you very much, Mr. Canadian. That's definitely a Canadian thing to try to video tag you with a freaking moose. <laughs> Or it could be something as simple as download numbers or, or, or not sharing a, th a link, you know, somebody promoting your stuff that you thought they were or. Uh, OK, here's here's a tough one. Maybe your own family doesn't want to listen to you. <gasps> no, my family will listen to everything that I do. Right. No, no, that's definitely not going to happen. Uh, you might have some you might have some not um, just because it's the same thing with all your other stuff. It's not like if you're in the local beer league, your family's coming to every single <laughs> single sports game it's not like your mom's coming to that probably and maybe she has maybe not but uh my mom doesn't come to mine my mom would mm. Mm -hmm. but anyway podcasting isn't the only thing only hobby that can disappoint you i know plenty of golfers that have thrown their golf clubs when they become frustrated or disappointed <laughs> in their performance i know plenty of fishermen that have gone out they spent fifty thousand dollars on that new boat thinking it's gonna catch all the fish only to find out that you don't catch anything. I know a lot of people that are runners, they're disappointed in their race times. And uh, I know a lot of fans out there that are extremely disappointed in their sports teams failures. And being a Minnesotan, this is this hits home because, yeah, I, I'm no longer a Vikings fan because, uh, yeah, they haven't won anything ever. <laughs> uh, or just to give you a, a real world example of how podcasting will disappoint you. Sometimes you start a podcast and it's like, I'm going to talk about hobby podcasting. So you start that and then you're like, you know what? I would like to do a little bit more with this, this guy named Steven. So you invite him to do the hobby podcast with you. And then you find out that he's just a schmuck that holds up moose pictures. So then you're disappointed about that. 
Stephen. I hate to uh, burst your bubble, but I've been constantly disappointed with you ever since we started. <laughs> but anyways, on that note, we just wanted to go over all of these here. We know that they sound really negative, and intentionally it was negative because, again, we're talking about setting the expectations. And if you set the expectations realistically, you can find ways to overcome them. And that's what we wanted to do is lay that out right now. It's been a while since we've talked about some of the, the fundamentals of, of hobby podcasting. And we have a lot of people who write us saying they're still thinking about starting their podcast. And we thought this was a really good episode to do to set the foundation, set the stage. And as we have the realistic expectations, you're more likely to continue when all of a sudden all of these things happen. So we hope you enjoyed it. We, we hope that it, it does help you pull that trigger being like, okay, it's okay. I know there will be disappointments and it's okay. And that's what we wanted to do. And next time we're going to tell you a little bit about some conventions and money. Hmm, that'll be in the future couple episodes. So keep your ears out for that as the hobby podcaster. Until then, we will get to our download. Welcome to this week's Better Podcasting Download. This week, we wanted to delve really briefly into one of the articles that was put out by the Bridge Ratings. And we talked about the Edison research in the last couple of months, actually, in the last time we, we downloaded an Edison research on podcasting, and then they had a general audio consumer one earlier. Well, the Bridge Ratings also has an annual study that they put out in the springtime, late springtime every year. And this one was specifically focused on ad revenue. That's what the bridge ratings does. They do studies to help possible advertisers out figure out where to spend their money. And after they did a study called the uh, 2017 Podcasting's Breakthrough Year, they set out another article saying podcasting best practices, the study. And included in that study was six specific best practices. And I'm going to go through them really quick. Number one was producers of podcasts should have a clear idea of the prospect or audience, basically the target market to talk about an advertising uh, phrase right there. Number two is be organized and know where the podcast is going. Number three is edit. Number four is establish a publishing schedule. Number five is tagging metadata for SEO purposes. And number six is promotion. So I will say out of those six, have a clear idea of where your audience is. Number one, that's good. Number three, edit. We always say edit your podcast because you're competing in a very vast market of people that are better behind the mic with you or have better editing skills. So you might as well edit. Number four is establish a publishing schedule where you're all about whatever that constant schedule is, weekly, monthly, bi-weekly, whatever. Taking metadata, yes, get your SEO right. And then six is the promotion. Yes, we just talked about real expectations. And one of the real expectations you have to do is promote in this day and age. Now, the one that I'm going to talk specifically about is number two. The average time spent with podcasting is 22 minutes. This is a real reality from the study that said the average person listens to a podcast about 22 minutes at a time. This does not mean that the optimum length of your podcast is 22 minutes, and they state as such. But I just want to say, from the better podcasting standpoint, we advocate making your content as long as it has to be. It imparts the good content, and it is done in a very listenable fashion that is in line with the rest of your content. You don't slow down. You don't pick up. You don't radically change your presenting format. And yeah, as long as it has to be. I listen to podcasts anywhere from one minute to hours long. It doesn't matter. As long as the content is good and I'm interested in it, I will listen to it. Now, that's a study of one, but... There are many different podcasts out there at many different lengths, and there's a reason for that. So don't think that this study is saying you have to make a podcast that is 22 minutes because that is the average commute time or that is the <laughs> average time that somebody listens at the same time at, at once. No, you make your content as long as it has to be. Right, Stephen? Oh, absolutely. And that's the, I it really bugs me when people try to say that you should have content at a certain length because it's just not true. As another person who listens to podcasts more than 22 minutes, I listen to some that are 15 minutes, 10 minutes. I listen to some that are multiple hours. 
I am a listener, a real world example of somebody who will listen to that 22 minute advice and say, that's not for me. It's not for me. If you are doing something that needs five minutes worth of attention and you draw that out to 22, I'm going to hate that myself. I'm going to be like, this is like, stop saying the six, the same thing six times in a row. It doesn't have, it's not going to matter. And on the flip side, if there's something that I think needs to be delved into a little bit further, I'm going to be disappointed where it's like, so bomb drop goes here. Let's move on. You know, it's just like, what? Go back to the bomb drop, right? Like at 22 minutes, a lot of people are misinterpreting this right now. I've seen it all over the internet. And again, I'm with SP. I will listen to different lengths productions. So 22 minutes, maybe hook your listener a little bit within 22 minutes. Maybe, you know, really upsell them and encourage them the reasons to go past that 22 minutes. But don't put, don't treat it as gold, basically. There's two other things that are stated along these lines in this article. I just want to call out one is listeners commit beyond the first five minutes. You get a lot of people that check your stuff out and they go away within five minutes. But if they've lasted after five minutes, they're going to commit. So that's what that five minute stat is. So generally, the other thing that goes along with that is try to make your content just dive right into it within that five minutes so they can get to the content in five minutes. And while that's generally a good idea, if your natural flow of your show is to gradually seep into your main topic, kind of like what we do here on Better Podcasting, we don't take an enormous amount of time to get to the main topic. Sometimes uh, how I save my podcast story gets uh, longer than five minutes. OK, but that's good content, too. And that's part of the show. But if you if part of your show is getting to know your hosts and, and, and relaying something personal and you have that at the start and you're not making it long, but you are making it uh, with purpose, trying to get the audience to know you and then get onto your main content, that's OK, too. The shows that just jump right into their topic, while I value that method of podcasting, I also is kind of shaken abruptly as they do that personally. Now, again, survey of one SP says, I don't like shows that just jump right into their topic. I do listen to them and they great give great content and I move on from that. But this is not the type of co overall content that will engender me to be a fan of that person for whatever they do. So they just keep those considerations in mind. This is not, and as we stated before in the main topic, this is not an end all be all. This is just one way of looking at things and you have to understand what they're they're coming from. They're coming from it from an ad agency standpoint. They're coming at it from trying to sell ads and you as a hobby podcaster are in the business of trying to create great content and maybe expand your listener base. You are not in the business, unfortunately yet, because you don't have the downloads or maybe you just don't want to of getting ads. So that's just a little uh, things to keep in mind as you read some of this advice. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad that you found this because again, I'll credit, give credit where credit's due. Stargate Pioneer always has his finger on the pulse of this research. So thank you very much, Stargate Pioneer. I'm glad that we were able to present this today and talk about why 22 this hour has more than 22 minutes. Pull my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to what you had to say this week in the Better Pod Back. All right, it was a very full, full disclosure, couple of weeks, because we uh, we pre-recorded episode 77, because the SP had to go away, then I had to go away, so it was all sorts of craziness, so it's been a couple of weeks since we've actually taken it and read out your feedback, and first off, let me give credit to Johnny Pennington, who we've talked about before, he is the astute video viewer, he is one of our diehard, dedicated video viewer fans, and uh, Johnny wrote us a follow-up after our little fun that we had last episode, which again, not going to talk about because we want to encourage you to check out the YouTube channel if you'd like. Just the last couple of minutes of episode 77, we had a bit of fun there, and uh, Johnny, just got to say, the humorous element, the guess, the guess that you had is correct, that's right. It was indeed the idea of the person you suspected, but again, not going to talk about it. So tease the video viewer, the audio viewer at uh, youtube.com slash gonna geek. And let's get into some other feedback that is, is not directly related to the video show. We had Keith Farley say, guys, in response to your latest episode question about podcast apps, as much as I want to love Apple podcasts, it's just, it just can't compete with overcast. 
It's hands down my favorite. I still use Apple Podcasts to find new shows and see what's trending, but my primary listenership or listening app is Overcast. When I was on Android, I used Pocket Casts. Used it on my phone, tablet, and web app. Certainly worth the price. And again, Overcast is uh, actually, sorry, Overcast is one that SP has talked about before. Pocket Cast is one that I recently have tried out. And SP, it's interesting. I want to know your feedback here because I know you went away from Overcast to the Apple Podcasts app, right? No, I use Overcast if I'm oh. uh, consuming like a one-off show and I don't want it to read as as listened in the Apple Podcasts or iTunes environment. So I do still use podcast app as my primary thing, but there's some weird thing about listening to a, a podcast and deleting it in the podcast app. So I try to stem away from that. And that's why I primarily use Overcast. If I'm, if a new show has dropped and I'm just trying to listen to it right then and I do it, it I got to tell you between the two Overcast is great. Now, the reason why I use the podcast app as my primary version uh, or app to listen to stuff is it also syncs up with iTunes, now Apple Podcasts, whatever you want to call it. And I use an iPod at work and I have to make sure that they sync up. So that is why I use the podcast app. Ah, well, I always defer to you, the Apple guru on this show. That is sad to say if I'm the Apple guru on any show. (laughs) Uh, We also had Damien write us. SP, what did Damien have to say? I'm on episode 67 listening to your backlog, and I had something I decided I needed to comment on because of how strongly I related to it. Stephen was talking about polarizing topics and specifically politics and how it can drive away a listener. I felt I had to say this exact thing happened to me. One of the RPG podcasts I'd been listening to for about a year started one of their episodes after the U.S. election with essentially a soap box segment about the result and carried on for a few minutes about how they felt about it, even getting to the point of how I should be feeling about it as a listener. I stopped the episode and I haven't listened to them since. So it's a real thing that can absolutely drive somebody away. Yes, Damien, this is something specifically with politics. It's been very polarizing in the United States. There are shows that are dedicated to it. There are shows that give both sides. I won't say fair and balanced because that's overused (laughs) by a news organization, which isn't necessarily fair and balanced, but they can show both sides. But mostly it's on one side or the other. And it isn't necessarily Democrat or Republican. It could be conservative and liberal. It could, take your pick of whatever side it is. It is so polarizing that you will drive away half your listenership. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. But if your show isn't politically based, you're driving away half your potential listeners on another topic that doesn't have anything to do with politics. So just keep that in mind. And uh, you should, if you're interested to hear a little more about this, go back to episode 67 and listen to what we talked about. But the the long short of it was that we had two different encounters. One was a podcast that I was listening to that usually con- focuses on sort of the evolution of media and, and things like that. And um, I guess more modern media. And what it was, was they started to talk a little bit about, about podcasts and the impact that they had, that it was that had on media and and or sorry politics and and how it affected podcasts and they were doing a good job up until the point that they started to actually give their opinion on politics itself rather than talking about sort of the focus on media it was now about actual politics and i was like okay i'm done and i walked away and actually i've only listened to a couple episodes since uh to be honest with the show it's just a it's not been for me. I, I just it really, really drove a wedge between us. There's another example to do with the TV show also shared in that episode. So go back episode 67. We won't recap too much here. Uh, if you want to hear a little bit more about our opinion on it and clearly uh, other listeners opinions as well. We did get another Facebook message from CJ Eason about our review of Blue Jean, which is a streaming service that can link up to Facebook. We haven't forgotten about it. I just wanted to call it out on the podcast right here. We are getting into it sometime in the future. Our schedules have been very chaotic. We've had different business trips that we've each had to take. We've been out of state, each of us, from our home studio. So just hang tight on that. We'll eventually get to the blue jean. Now, over on Twitter, we asked a question, what do you consider podcasting success? 
And Stephen, what are some of the responses that we received? Uh, well, first off, Diami Poloki said famous GMC sponsorship as well as having your mom attend your baseball games. So that was what we, no, uh, we had Diami Poloki say uh, community. And once being recognized on and once being recognized on the streets based on my voice alone. What? No. Yeah. And no. not just any streets, the street of Des Moines, Iowa. I mean, that's getting pretty specific. So that is awesome, Diami. And especially since you're from the East Coast. So I don't know what you were doing in Des Moines. Probably a woodworkers conference, I'm thinking. Probably had some other woodworkers around. Just listen to your voice. I've heard about this before, by the way. Like if you're just talking in a public space and somebody's like, hey, wait a minute. I know that voice. Oh, that is the voice of blank, whatever host it is. And it's, <laughs> it's a great thing that happens. So, yes, your listeners are all over the place. Even if you have an, only have 100 listeners, odds are at some point in time, you're going to cross paths with one of those 100 listeners as long as they're in the same country. So uh, keep that in mind. Also, Anthony Bachman replied and he said, when I introduce somebody to a new book or movie or game or comic that changes the way they think or alter their world view, that is a very altruistic way to think about that, Anthony. And he also went on and he said, when I laugh so hard, I cry when a listener enjoys the show and lets me know when I make one of my co-hosts laugh. So he's all about the sharing the community and the friendship there. So thank you very much for sharing that. Mr. Anthony Bachman. We also had Aurelia say, I'm still catching up, but I was wondering, have you guys talked about the Knox podcasting microphone yet? If not, any chance? Well, yes. Yes, indeed, we have. And uh, if you haven't actually checked this out yet, SP did a full review. Yes, a full review comparing it to the Audio-Technica AT2005, the Audio-Technica ATR2100, and of course the Knox was in there. And you can check this out at geeks.link slash Knox. That's K-N-O-X. That'll take you right to the full review. I encourage you to check it out because he did a really good job of just uh, analyzing this way in so many different ways. And uh, it is easily, it's actually an easy recommendation for us now. It is, uh, with the caveat that mm -hmm. it might not have a, that great of warranty like an ATR2100 has a limited lifetime warranty and the Knox only has a one year limited warranty. So there's just some distinctions to be made there, but for the price, I'll take the reduction in warranty, let me tell you. <laughs> Also, some guy, I don't know who it was, uh, let's see, at Stargate Pioneer on Twitter. I don't know who that guy is. Anyway, he said, to all you podcast link debaters, I have only one thing to say. I only listen to podcasts that I listen to. <gasps> yes. Ooh, meta or what? Uh, <laughs> it actually got a lot of feedback. We had, we had the Ninja Fat Man say, wait, length is debated? What's ideal? And, and this is actually Nate from the Gunna Geek Network in... He, we've had some conversations with him like this before, and a lot of people have no idea that this is a debated fact. And, and honestly, I think a lot of people who aren't uh, aren't aware of this probably, and I don't know if this is the case with Nate, but a lot of people think, why why would you debate that? You know, uh, make content that is content that is the right length for the content, right? So yeah, interesting to see that. And we had Ferris say, length debaters are up there with people who complain Marin has a 15 minute intro every week every week <laughs> i do not listen uh, full disclosure i do not listen to wtf with mark Marin, but apparently i've heard a lot of people comment on his thing and once you know you can just skip through a bunch of that stuff and get to the actual content like if you know the intro is 15 minutes then you can go forward and oh by the way he responded this is dx ferris again from twitter he said so if you know and you have fast forward technology what's the problem similarly do you have episode length technology? Maybe you don't listen to the stuff you don't like, you know? You know? <laughs> uh, and sort of along that same same train of thought, we had Kent say, oddly, sometimes I listen to one episode of a podcast I don't normally listen to. I do that all the time. Matter of fact, I found a couple of podcasts recently that I really enjoy because of that. And Chris Farrell, who's been on this podcast before, and he is also on the Gonna Geek Network, decided to reply to the same tweet, and he said, sorry guys, it was really cold outside. All right, geez, leave me alone. Well, you gotta make sure you keep your 
electrical gear, your audio equipment within proper operating specifications, because the air is as soon as you go down below a certain temperature, uh, electronics stop to work working. So just keep that in mind. Look at the factory specs. But that is taking us to the end of the better pod back this week. We want to thank everybody who came by this show, came by, watched us live at Geeks.Live, including Anthony Bachman and Jason Bryant. We had Anthony actually early on in the show comment about Babyface Pioneer. Apparently, he had not realized for the video side of things that Stargate Pioneer is now beardless and he is baby faced again. So uh, we talked about that before. SP is indeed shaved. Be aware if you are expecting a gristled Stargate Pioneer. Apparently, there was some consternation about the video quality because of the shine from the baby face as well. <laughs> Check out the previous episode. We also Jason Bryant did come in and uh, say that he has ordered himself a brand new T-shirt. If you want to know what that t-shirt is, you should hit him up on Twitter. It is twitter.com slash Jason M. Bryant, I believe. Or if you want to listen to a world-class wrestling announcer, you should hit him up and hit up his network, Matt Talk Weekly, I believe. Jason's a good guy. You should uh, follow him. If, if you like, if you like an, a fun guy to interact with on Twitter, you should definitely follow Jason. But... There you go. That's the end of the show. Before we do say final goodbyes, I just want to thank on this show, Stargate Pioneer. I was away this past week. I mentioned it. I was away last week in my hotel room in Vancouver, and I was, I don't like to go out. I like to be social. It's other, why would I be social? No, I actually had a, had a bit of a back problem, so I was mostly in my hotel, not wanting to walk too much. And uh, I got myself about an hour and a half break on Wednesday and Thursday to just do something from the comfort of my hotel room. That's right. SP invited me on both the Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast and the Starling Tribune podcast this week on GunnaGeekNetwork.com, which was a lot of fun because usually when I'm at home, those conflict with things that I got to do with the family. So uh, thanks so much for having me on. It was a lot of fun and it was uh, it just made me happy that I brought my Wonderful Audio Technica HD 2005 microphone along with me. Yeah, it was great having you on both those podcasts. But while you were out of your home, I decided to stab you in the back and go run to another podcast. And I was invited to be on a, a couple of podcasts, Three Angry Nerds, in which we talked a lot of the weekly geek stuff and comic books and sci-fi. And also, it was interesting. They invited me to be on their spinoff show, nerds in love in which case we gave dating and love advice to fans so if you want to hear about how sp thinks about the dating circuit you can check out the nerds in love episode from the 2nd of may 2017 but that is indeed the end of episode 78 79 and 80 because it was over 44 minutes of the better podcasting no this is the end of episode 78 of better podcasting I'm Stephen John Drew saying, I hope you have a wonderful time recording your next podcast. And I'm Stargate Pioneer saying, have fun with your podcast dating app. Bye. See you next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of Better Podcasting. We want to hear from you. You can find all of our contact information at betterpodcasting.com. If you like the show, please consider giving us a five-star review in iTunes. We encourage you to check out all of the other geeky podcasts available at gunnageeknetwork.com. This has been a Gunna Geek production. Thanks for listening, and we will see you again next week.